yes, uh, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends of uh, our modern times, of our complex times, and of uh, the transformation we are living in, uh, which I will talk about. So uh, the title is, can, can you hear me and can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. So uh, how cybernetics will support the Great Transformation 21. I, uh, I'm often asked whether I mean the year 2021 in which we are in. No, dear friends, it is the 21st century. It will take the whole century uh, for this transformation. We have invented, uh, together with the help of scientists uh, from other organizations, also dear friends and some with, uh, which were with us, the Syntegration Method. Syntegration is an artificial uh, word uh, composed from synergy and integration. And you're familiar, most probably, synergy, working together, coming together, etc., and integration, making some greater thing out of uh, that uh, synergetic uh, meetings. And uh, we, I will show you how we can use complexity like human brains do. So we are very close to human brains and to bionics, which is one of my uh, other uh, scientific uh, uh, field to learn from nature, how she works. And um, that's another, uh, would be another issue. But now how does the brain uh, use uh, complexity? The brain is enormously complex and our companies are too, and in particular those companies, and uh, I will give some examples because we are applying these things now. It is publicly known uh, from, the from the CEO of uh, Volkswagen, uh, Dr. Dies, uh, that uh, the disintegration is uh, the best tool for, uh, for enabling uh, organizations uh, to change and to transformational uh, change. So for, mo for most of you probably, I do not know, but for so many people, the word uh, cybernetics is, the science of cybernetics is unknown. And if they uh, know it, then they know it from the dark side, namely uh, cyber pornography or cyber crime or cyber hacking and things like that. Yes, they do exist. Everything can be misused. But on the other hand, cybernetics is the very science of self-regulating systems. So you don't have to tell a flower uh, how it should grow uh, and, uh, and what it shall do in the night and when it gets cold weather and so on and so forth. Nature knows by itself what uh, is the decent adaptation moves. And this is what it is all about. The science of self-regulating and self-organizing uh, systems. So this is the paradigm of the transformation I'm talking about. You see these two S-curves, one in red. Uh, colors do have no political connotation. Uh, the red one is the old one, which is flattening out here. Here we have the time axis. And here we have the development of these things. And this is the new one. And if I uh, look into the critical decision zone, uh, this is where complexity really exists and where we have to go through by removing all uh, or replacing all our uh, resources, changing the organizational structures, uh, teaching people, and learning by them uh, totally different things than they have learned in school. So where are we here? Maybe here in the middle. And uh, at this point in time, we are totally deceived because here to conventional economic thinking, it says, go ahead. We have a little bit less growth rate, smaller growth rate than yesterday, but it will go on with growth. So we are doing a little bit more marketing, etc. And here, yes, there is something new they talk about. 
in the USA called Silicon Valley and so on. But uh, that, that will not really work. For every uh, company which is successful in Silicon Valley, please estimate how, how many are unsuccessful. My estimation is one by 10,000. But one talks, of course, not about the 10,000 failing, uh, but about a small number of companies which are really uh, successful. By the way, does somebody of you know when Apple was founded? No? 1976. It's very large time span back, isn't it? And uh, does somebody know when the first iPhone was on the market? Hey, ladies and gentlemen, 2008. So look, the company was founded 1976 and the first uh, money making uh, uh, product was 2008. Of course, they did other things in between, but I mean, one has to know these, uh, these uh, dates in order to see where we are. Okay, so we cannot look into the future. So the, the deception is here. Uh, go on on the red curve because the, gray, the, the green one is not that interesting. But of course, here we know then what we should have been doing here at this point in order to be here uh, when it comes up and when the green curves curve definitely uh, rules. I'm going to show you two examples of these curves. This is uh, the, the rise of the automobile in the United States. Their uh, statistics are very much better than our European ones. And at the same time, horses and other animals uh, have been uh, going back and you see the elegance of these curves. And if you color it a little bit and smoothen it a little bit, then you see how these processes works. And another example is the traffic infrastructures in the United States, four large cycles, like I have shown them. These are the ships, look, it starts at 1800. You already see the S curved, the S uh, uh, curved shape. Then we have uh, the railways in the United States. Then uh, we have the paved roads, the automobile and then the uh, flight traffic, it's not yet at the limit. And what is the next uh, uh, wave? Maybe magnetic uh, railways, uh, we don't know, or probably we don't have any such things any longer because we have the web and all the computers, etc. And what uh, you will see is that the distances between these processes are absolutely equal, namely, by roughly 55 years. You say that's not possible. Yes, it is possible. And this is how our world is working. Now, there is a saying in our society, everything depends on people. And in particular, in the economy and in the business uh, organizations, is it right? Everything depends on people? No, it's wrong. Everything depends on the relationships between people. And that is something totally different. You see this first figure. This is Thomas, this is Judy, this is Elizabeth, and this is Carl, and uh, this is uh, Walter. People, living people, and they are interconnected like this. What comes out if Tom tells something to Elizabeth and uh, asks her to to whisper it further the line. We know what comes out, nonsense, everywhere. It is interculturally valid, even in China, everywhere, because we are humans. This kind of communication system destroys communication. You can change it around, then you have our organizational hierarchy, and you know probably many people who are complaining about hierarchies which do not work communication-wise. The other one is this one. We have the same people, 
And of course, it's a different setup. It's a different system, and therefore communication works differently. And um, what you see, there are no interconnectivities here. Then the arrows go only down and not up. This is a system for maximizing the power of this person up here, and it works perfectly well instead of a society where knowledge becomes important. As soon as knowledge becomes important, this breaks down. This one is our familiar team and it works very well. If we are working with a small number of uh, people, about five, about seven, nine is no longer teams and, uh, and larger groups are no teams at all. But what is when we need more people in order to change our companies, our organizations, if we need 50, hundreds, and even more to join into the process of change, and in most cases, almost simultaneously, then we have built on another uh, geometrical logic, which is the most complex platonic uh, uh, geometric body. As you see, it is the icosahedron. You're familiar with it, uh, I suspect, which is has 12 uh, such uh, uh, corners here and is enormously beautiful, interconnected, a uh, little wonder, no, a large wonder of uh, cybernetic logic for the optimal communication of large numbers of people uh, widely above a team size. So please remember these communication things. So you see, it does not depend. It's always the same people. It depends, the working, the functioning depends on the interconnectivity. And this is uh, what we probably will, uh, will be the name for the transformation we are in, namely that it was the interconnectivity revolution, something like that. I give you an example, a puzzle. If you know that an object consists of about 15 kilo of coal, four kilograms of nitrogen, one kilo of lime, half kilo of phosphorus and sulfur, about 200 grams of salt, 150 grams of potash and chlorine, and about 15 other materials, and some four to five buckets of water, what is it? Please guess what, or maybe you know, what is it? Nobody? If I suggest a bump. Pardon me? A bump. Bomb. No, it's not a bomb. No. no, no. <laughs> it's very peaceful. As explosive, maybe as a bomb. Most people say, oh, this is a person. I say, how do you come to that solution? A person. This is uh, 15 kilo of coal, etc., etc. But they are very close to the truth. This is what remains or what, we, what comes out when the professor of chemistry has done his job, namely decomposing a person into its chemical elements. What is lacking? The interconnectivity. And if you do the right interconnectivity, it gets a person, any person, you see? Okay, let's move on. We can try to solve problems in this format, the small team, several small groups, or in large meetings. In our world, none of these formats really works. You have gone through these pains in the German election process and in many other situations, and you have, are certainly familiar with the small group. Uh, yes, it's very nice people, but what comes out in many cases, and in particular, if we have complexity as the as new uh, stuff uh, the in, the, for intelligence, then it will not work, but something else will. We can look at nature, and if we take this structure to buildings, then we have something totally different than the towers, for instance, of the old, uh, uh, churches we have in Europe, Florence or uh, the Vatican and so on, they all have to be, uh, to be uh, improved with steel bands and they don't uh, 
they cannot bear their own weight by themselves, but this can. And so we go on and take this figure in order to take it as the basis for the communication process. We start with an opening question when you have really large and complex problems in order then to map 12 issues which we are going to tackle at the same time, discussing at the same time with a group of 30, 40, 50, and even multiples of a person in order to solve complex issues by disintegration. The process of uh, which I'm going to show you is this uh, body of communication of interconnected um, issues, topics, for instance, return on management education, training administration, HR strategy, need for assessment centers, here over there, the program evaluation, costs and budgets, and so on and so forth. And we can now make, enable 40, that's the ideal number, 42, but we can go up to 50 and even more participants to work like one brain. That is astonishing probably to you because there are more than 10 to the power of 40 combinatorial possibilities to set 40 persons to 12 persons in the optimal way with the right interconnectivity. Actually, the number of combinatorial possibilities, 10 to the 40, are 10 sextillions. That's quite a large number, you know. So let us move on. How does it look? Here we have the group, you see it in dark. Here you see some uh, lights up there. And here we have a company today, which is still on the red curve. And this is it now uh, known to you. And now we put on our lights. And you see here our icon for this integration, 20 to 40 and even more and then several integrations of uh, persons, and they are going to discuss 12 topics in their changing group within the logic of this icosahedron. And this then looks somewhat like this. The little balls in the colors are the communicational interchange, and we can listen to that, and this follows the setup, the logic of this uh, 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 um, communication uh, format. And you see how they interconnect. I mean, this is a schematic uh, representation, but you might get uh, uh, at, at least an idea of what goes on in such a large group when they discuss 12 topics. And now we can blend into with our, almost with, with our lights, with our models for management, what they are talking about. And for this model, the overall management system, we need the, in this case, white, it's arbitrary of course, the colors, the white uh, bits and pieces of communication. And then we have another tool with which we are looking onto this uh, dynamic uh, group uh, and their discussions for uh, electing and for selecting out, fishing out the cybernetic circuits for self-regulation and self-organization of this company. Then we have uh, the organizational structure, which we build according and analog in, in analogy to the human nervous system. We call it the viable system, which pinpoints the central nervous system of, um, of um, organisms. Here we have uh, an icon for the strategy, and here is the map for the corporate culture. So we can get uh, the whole analysis, and then afterwards we do the synthesis within three short days, whereas in classical uh, processes, you need month and month for doing such analysis. And then you have never all these people uh, together with their dynamics and, and with their enormous riches 
of information which they are going to uh, are exchanging during this process. And in the end, we can now build, you see this arrow, a new kind of organization on the green curve. It looks quite similar now building wise, but it does totally different things after such a process. We have done more than 2000 such integrations. Some people call it mass or large group workshops, but that's totally different because the large group workshops don't have uh, uh, the scientifically uh, uh, proven uh, structure and logic. They are discussing, of course, uh, but not according to, an, to a format which gives such uh, results. So uh, workshops are forerunners of this uh, process. And this now is at the moment of time, uh, the um, most um, um, powerful and uh, result producing uh, format of dealing with complexity. Uh, some people want to do away with complexity or reduce complexity. That is totally wrong because complexity is our new raw material for solving complex issues. We need complexity as the raw material for solving uh, the appropriate uh, uh, issues. Now, this is a little piece of interregulated, interconnected um, uh, system. These variables here, culture of competence, a competent IT staff, the effective management, complexity of technological infrastructure, functioning, a viable structure, a clear and executed IT strategy, resources for IT security, transparency, and so on and so forth. And you see how they are all interconnected. We must not disconnect them because then they lose every character of a system. And uh, we can pinpoint some facts, 12 key factors, 48 direct effects, and 303, not all of them are shown, uh, feedback loops. That's quite a large system already, 300, more than 300 feedback loops. And the system diagnosis is that the system is rather strongly interconnected, the degree of networking effects to factors is four, which is 60% more in this case than the average, average from our many thousands of applications we have done. And if we now go on, then we can, of course, say reduce it. But if you reduce it, then you lose the character of the system. This is what I have shown at the beginning. If you take away the interconnectivity, then you don't have any longer a person, but you have a heap of, uh, of chemicals and, and some bucks of uh, water, but no longer a system. And so we can interconnect this now, and you see now some uh, colored uh, feedback loops, which are important, have been important in this kind of a system. And so we can really experiment with such uh, uh, complex uh, systems and in their so-called, or uh, in a way we can, we can call it like that, a living organism uh, with all its interconnectivities. Uh, so this then is a map which where we can show, uh, for instance, where the critical impacts are, where we can move the system, uh, which may something uh, which uh, moves the, the system very fast and very strongly. These are, uh, is another bunch of uh, influences where, where we, which, with which we can uh, move the system. These are the rather quiet uh, variables in the system. I do not go into the details, the important variables in this human resources system according to their position in this critical systemic map. And this is another management system we have designed from the environment of the uh, organization to the corporate policy 
the governance of the organization, the strategy, structure, and culture, and the executives, and the measures which come out of such a process are then ascribed to the particular uh, parts of these maps, of these systemic maps. And if you now have an organization chart of the usual kind, we will not much longer have such uh, organizational charts because there are new ones in the beginning. And this is again the icon for disintegration. And then you can place various formats. This is the smallest one, the tetrahedon. And then there are, is also the, the cube. You see that up here. And if you now go through this uh, large uh, organization, at the moment, we are doing that with uh, Volkswagen that is publicly known, even from uh, the CEO who has published about it in the Handelsblatt. And uh, then you see how we move schematically uh, such large organizations into the new kind of transformation in, from the, today's world into the next uh, kind of world. So this is another part of another uh, picture of a management system from the corporate mission and policy down to the results. And we can also put the measures which come out, the actions which come out through such an amplification management system in order to uh, implement the changes which are needed with which have come out from the disintegration uh, process. Well, that's it uh, about uh, more or less. I uh, hope I have uh, stick to the, stuck to the time. Uh, what I will show you for uh, uh, to end with this, these are the topics, the projects which come out, 12, as I have already told, and these are the boards, the divisions, uh, which uh, culminate in the board of the company. And you see how many interrelationships are, there are in such an organization if you start to realize, to implement all the projects, all the measures which have come out. And uh, the reason this is more than 4,000 possibilities, you see here, there can be more than 5,000 different networking scenarios between the 12 topics, there are 41 measures and the eight board divisions. And that means we need a, a transformation control center in order to regulate uh, such processes in, the, uh, in today's uh, world of rising uh, complexity all over the world. So this is uh, basically what I have uh, to show you. And uh, this is now the usual conventional, uh, it takes some time, it fades out, you see, and no problem is really look at our politics all over the world, basically, or in many, in, in the majority of uh, countries. And uh, what we can do now is, if you look here at the timeline, uh, implement the measures very, very quickly. Within one year, everything is basically done. And the change of culture is realized immediately during the three and a half days of disintegration because of this really strong and densely uh, working uh, communication process, which goes from the which, which, which reaches the highest rate of consensus. Uh, instead of the old kind of compromises, which today in our com complex world are no longer uh, solutions. Thank you for your um, attention. And uh, uh, maybe there are some questions. Back to you, Yip. Thank you, Fred Wund. This is really, really, really fascinating because it's a different way of thinking. Maybe you could elaborate, you know, this transformation control center, that thing in the center, because this is something, you know, when we think of decentralization, actually what we 
typically think is it's peer-to-peer -peer direct node connections, right? But now in your model, we have this TCC in the center. What role does it have and what skills do people need that are operating or part of that TCC? Look, if you have a company from the, of the size of Volkswagen, which has now 600 and 670,000 employees all over the world, and uh, it is in the, in the newspapers, uh, very often, and you are most certainly, I think so, I, I, I assume so, that uh, you're sort of uh, informed by the media and, and the, the columns that uh, uh, the CEO is uh, writing, very uh, wonderful, crisp and to the point and so on. Um, we have already worked together in BMW some 12 years ago, and the question is, or the, the, the advantage is, that uh, these uh, the people have the knowledge which they need with them in their head. You see, it's not just information that they have to learn, but they accept really, uh, and 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 uh, uh, they al almost brief uh, the results which come out. But of course, you have to have such um, coordination centers. Uh, which sometimes also use uh, integration uh, because the complexity otherwise would be too large. A simple example, basically simple, but uh, the logic is uh, more or less comparable, is the tower uh, on a uh, on a on a on an air in in, in the air traffic. You see, so we have millions of flights uh, in in, in uh, yearly. Not now during the pandemic, of course, this is another situation, uh, but uh, the control mechanism is the tower at the airport and uh, it functions according to these principles very well is with all weather conditions day and night around the world and uh, uh, accidents are very, very, very little. Uh, of course, if they happen, then there are hundreds of uh, killed people, that is very sad, but they, it's so rare and it works so wonderful uh, whether we have uh, flight uh, traffic in the future, we will see because now we have gone through the, uh, the next step, which is what we are doing here, uh, communicating via uh, electronics, of course, and uh, this is even better for many, not for all processes and not for all people, but for many, as uh, you have uh, shown with your invitation here and the organization. Thank you very much for that. Thank you. If we were to recap, you know, the main driver behind the effectiveness of integration for the human person, what is it? Why is that method helping people to internalize knowledge so fast? What is the secret sauce? There is no secret, let's see. This is the use which we are making from this body. This, the interconnectivity of this geometric body is it which delivers us the logic. Highly disciplined, but at the same time, you see, people like it, you see? That it's fun. It's not work, it's fun. Sometimes they are a little bit wild with each other because they are exchanging a uh, highly relevant, different, uh, and uh, um, uh, non-compatible ideas. Uh, but after short periods of time, they have again found a way to flatten that out and to communicate in a very uh, constructive and very friendly uh, kind. So it's like an innovation in the way you're hosting meeting spaces like the, the communication structure and the facilitation of the meeting. yes exactly there is a lot of freedom within a lot of disciplines so we have joined freedom of speech and communication with a discipline who is talking uh, with whom uh, and everybody has the same time the same uh, possibilities and people use it they like it and therefore there are absolutely no uh, no uh, 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 troubles with this process we have never had. As I said, we have now more than 2,000 and uh, not one failed. All were very successful. More than 30,000 participants during the last 10 years 
And uh, so this process is really proved. And it comes from the geometrical logic which we are using as the base for communication. Thank you so much. Maybe I want to wrap up with a question for you personally. What is the question you know you wish young people would ask you, but you rarely hear? <laughs> yeah, you see, to describe such a complex uh, process uh, goes to the limits of language and of communication. To live it, it's totally easy. You see, after three days, yeah, it was. It's just like a fiesta. Highly disciplined, you see, or uh, yeah, a societal uh, event or something like that. Uh, but of course, uh, for enormously uh, important implications for the organization. And uh, if you see how how difficult it is to build new governments, like we have the example we had it in in, in, in Germany. Uh, I am in. I know some of those people, and uh, they want to uh, try integration in the next election. But that's four years uh, in the future. <laughs> we will see. But it's done in the companies and in other organizations, hospitals, universities, uh, all kinds of organizations, not just business organizations. See. Maybe you can share with us, and then we really want to wrap up. Like, you know, a use case where you had intra organizational disintegration, right? Mm -hmm. A system where you basically had different interests, but people who were actually not even part of the same organization. How yeah. do you understand that? And then what happens out of the output? I would uh, suggest to you that um, uh, we are over time now already. Uh, to send you some papers, some easy reading papers, and you can uh, distribute it at your, at your, uh, uh, as you like. Okay. No, okay. Very amazing because, in in my view, like I already said in the introduction. Yeah. It's of, is it, really it's of course also described in my in my books, uh, uh, but that's another chapter. But I'm going to to send you some uh, some papers. Yes. That's amazing. Let's do that. So thank you very much for sharing, you know, cybernetics principles with us in this method of disintegration. This is actually, in my point of view, one of the key knowledge pieces that we need if we want to make DAOs, for example, work exactly. for the future. Yep. Thank you okay. so much, Redmond, and thank, thank you so much for thank joining us so in the forum. Um, bye bye. <laughs> have a good one. Bye bye.